Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Weekly Spark. I'm going to be brief today. It is a terribly rainy day. Right now, my dog is behaving herself, chewing on a bone in the studio. Um, but I think we're probably going to have to go play some ball in the house, you know, some fetch, because the backyard's a mud pit. So let's see what time we can we can get in today. Um, yes, this is real life. This is what life in the studio looks like with a dog at your feet behaving or a dog trying to climb into your lap while you're trying to do beadwork. Not as comfortable. Um, so this month for the Weekly Spark, I wanted to focus on sprays. And there are a lot of sprays out there on the market. Uh, I've made some of my own sprays with watercolor, and I use them in a couple different ways in my pages. So I'm not actually going to do a page today, but I wanted to show you some samples of places where I've used spray um, just even recently in my 100-day project. And I want to show you some of the products that I have um, in case there are things that you have that maybe you use, maybe you don't use. In future videos this month, I will be doing a spread like I normally do, and I'll make sure that there are sprays in there, maybe with some masking, maybe with some stencils, maybe, you know, some different applications. If you are hearing that crunching in the background, I apologize. Um, so let me turn the camera around and we'll talk materials and I'll show you some samples. Like I said, it's going to be really direct, straight to the point, and um, easy, easy today. I will say before I turn around though that um, if you like this video or the things like this that I've been posting, then I would love a thumbs up or a sub subscribe to the channel, all the YouTube things, you know, because it really helps the algorithm. And leave a comment below if you use sprays in your art journal pages or if they're intriguing to you or if uh, if there are things that you want to see in future videos, leave that down there as well. So I look forward to comments. Stay tuned. Let me turn this camera around. So first off, let's talk watercolor sprays. Um, I have a bunch that I've just made from watercolors and uh, obviously water. This works if you have the semi-moist watercolors in a tube. And then you want to put a little in there, put in the water, shake it up so that that clump that you squeezed out of the tube dissolves and gives you some saturated color. I have some This is black. As you can see, it's really intense. Um, I actually made this from a liquid watercolor. It's a student grade product from Dick Blick, and I bought a couple to try years ago in black, brown, green, blue, really basic colors. And that's what this is, this blue. So there was a wash of blue laid down and then blue sprayed over top. And yeah, it went beyond my borders. That's fine. Um, there's even a little bit of this gold here. This was like a, probably a yellow oxide, um, Daniel Smith. I think this teal is probably a phthalo green, Daniel Smith. So some of the watercolors that I have in my palette that I've turned into sprays. This, you do see a lot of smush on some of these marks since they were really juicy when they came out of the spray bottle and I did blot them with a paper towel. If you are interested in the 100 Day Project and this little journal that I'm working in, I'll post that um, video link at the end of this one so that you can see kind of a flip through of this, which is one of the videos I did recently on the channel. Um, as to other sprays, all right, here you can see a lot of this blue overspray. You can see it here beyond the paper. You can see it speckling on this eye from a magazine collage. And that was Distress Oxide Sprays. So these are by Ranger Inc. and they are, you know, Tim Holtz products. They have a matte finish and so they're really a nice contrast. They feel a little bit chalky. 
And I do believe that they that are water reactive. Now, I don't tend to use them a lot and put more water on top of them later. I tend to just use them like straight up spray. So I am missing out on some of the benefits of this product, but you know, there's always time to play more. So I do have those in quite a large palette, everything ranging from, you know, old paper to forest moss. So I have probably one of those for every application that I might need. This was a scrap piece, but you can see that there's quite a lot of speckle and spray on that. That was from probably a protection sheet. You know, when I do the sprays, they get really messy. So at the very least, I want to have some paper towel behind the piece. If I'm doing a larger journal, I'll put up, you know, brown paper bags and use it to kind of cover up the surface all around so that I'm not spraying other materials, so that I'm not spraying my iPad or my phone or stuff that's on the table. It's hard to really control the spray. The closer you are, you get big heavy drops. So if you want that dispersed mist and you start, you know, spraying way, way up here, like where the, the camera is, you get that great dispersed mist, but you're also going to get that overspray onto other things. There's a lot of spray in this one. Um, it was extremely colorful and I was trying to unify things and tone things down a little bit. There's some of that Distress Oxide and Robin's Egg Blue right there to tie in with the tissue paper. Uh, but then there's this page, which I was really happy with because I had cut out the flowers and I had this found text. So the page was kind of building itself, but I wanted color. And, you know, I'd started some of the 100 Day Project with watercolor inside a framed area. So I was moving away from that. And so this is all spray. This is some watercolor and some distress spray in all different colors. Letting that dry, collaging over it, drawing right over it. Um, the blank areas that you see that are kind of clear, that are free of spray right here where I've stamped the dates, I had the clips there holding the book open. So that was doing kind of a twofold purpose. So let's just prep a page like this, even though I'm not going to do a whole spread now. Um, I am a few days behind on the 100-day project, and I'm not going to beat myself up about that because it is what it is, right? I'll skip a couple pages. I might double up and do a couple at one time. I can... I can make the rules as I go along. So I'm going to grab some blues. Uh, it's so rainy today that I really feel like blue is the color du jour. I will say that I also have these Dilutions ink sprays. Um, the artist behind this line is Diane Ravely or Reveley. And I like these. Um, sometimes the stoppers get stuck, you know, kind of clogged up. So that is not always the most perfect. I have some Adirondack color wash sprays, also by Ranger, also by Tim Holtz, and these tend to get clogged. And there are all kinds of tips online on how to turn them upside down, run them under hot water, rinse them out. So fixing the clog is easy enough to do, but it means going downstairs to the utility sink. It means um, taking all, testing them all and then taking them all downstairs. And sometimes I just want to grab and go when I'm doing something faster and more spontaneous. So we'll try some of these and see if they are clogged or not. So we're going to start with watercolor. I've got a Payne's Gray, so that's bluish. So close. Those really thick, heavy drops. And far. 
This is right up by the phone. Okay, so a little bit better, but that's just the nature of these spray bottles. These were just cheap bottles from Amazon. Oh, from Jerry's, sorry, from Jerry's Artorama. All right, let's do a little more watercolor. This is blue, so again, up high. Now, I don't know if you can see, but that has sprayed blue watercolor over all the bottles lined up behind me and even further back into some collage ephemera in that tray. So when I talk about overspray, I, I mean it. It's, uh, it can be quite messy. And yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, distressed. Blueprint sketch, which is a great blue. Down close. I mean, solid saturation, up high. So you can see the difference there because up high gives me this nice, really fine pattern. Okay, this is the denim, Adirondack denim color wash. Um, there's a lot of directional flow in that one. Um, let's try speckled egg. The distress sprays do want to be shaken. There's a uh, ball in there to activate. This is tumbled glass. A little more aqua colored. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, let's take this paper towel actually. I also keep a heat gun, you can use a hair dryer but I keep one of those handy so when I have areas that are really wet, I can dry them a little faster. So this page has a nice fade. Let's get a little more paint on here. it with just a tiny bit of water and see if we can see any of the effects from the distress materials that are water. Oh, they kind of all run and bleed together. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really kind of yummy. And yes, I, I just obliterated some of that, but I want to take this paper out. See a little more what the pages look like without all this overspray. So yeah, I mean, that took no time at all. And this is going to be a, a layered, rich background that I can work on. It's going to be perfect for the rainy day today. I've got some blue paper pulled here that I might use. I've got a little dictionary text that says, uh, deluge. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do a rain themed page, but for now, I just thought I would leave you with that kind of intro to some of the sprays and one of the easiest ways to use them as a quick background. It gives you nice coverage without the paper getting too wet, like it would if you were doing a heavy wash of watercolor. Uh, it is messy. People are gonna know what you've been up to, but I like the speckles and the mix. I like the texture from some of those speckles. You know, there's some really yummy speckly business in here. So yeah, sprays, whether you're purchasing them or whether you're making your own from some watercolors, 
like I said, if you have two watercolors, you have got instant sprays. You can just um, wet those down, put those in a spray bottle, and you're good to go. Um, I got to clean up my table because there's blue spray everywhere. Tune in next week and we'll actually do a page. Um, I'll try and have this one finished to show it to you and then we'll do another page maybe where we layer some sprays on top or maybe even add some stencils and sprays. So stay tuned for next week's Weekly Spark. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you later.